This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. We thank the Lord for another day, another opportunity to come before you and to worship the Lord today in spirit and in truth. And I pray that you would invite someone to just enjoy the fellowship, enjoy the word of God with us on today. I believe that God is going to bless us with a tremendous word on today, not because of the preacher, but because of the Lord himself. And so I encourage you to invite someone today to come and be a part of this service. You can tag them, cause them to uh, have a watch party. Cause them to uh, just hear the gospel on today. All right. We're going to begin with a word of prayer. I'm going to ask that you would just join in with us. Father, we thank you for thy goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you for the divine grace and favor that you have granted unto us. Thank you that you've given us another day, Lord that we've come to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray, God, that you would just have your way in the midst of us, that the glory of God would be revealed, that the presence of God would be felt. And I pray that there would be a great deliverance for souls who do not know you this day. But I pray, Lord, that they would walk away saying, I know Jesus for myself. I pray that you would strengthen us, that you would equip us, O oh God, Give us what to say and anoint us. Use us as your vessels and your instruments that you might be glorified. I pray that the sick and afflicted might be healed. I pray that burdens would be lifted and that there would be great joy in that soul on today. As we look unto you, Lord, the author and finisher of our faith, and we're going to be careful to give you all the praise and give you all the glory in Jesus' precious name, thank God. Amen. God bless you. We thank the Lord for his goodness and for his loving kindness and his tender mercy. And there is nobody like the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that I know him and that he is mine. And that I walk with him and that he walks with me. And I have no other desire but to live for the Lord. Praise God. You may have to turn it off. I'm going to restart the whole thing. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the Word of God. Have a little technical difficulty, but we're going to go forth anyhow. <clears throat> Let's go to the Word of God. In Matthews, the 16th chapter, and beginning with the, I think I want to begin with the 13th verse. All right. And it says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some saying that thou art John the Baptist, Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. God bless you. Lord, add a blessing to the reading of his word. And I want to use for a thought, who do you say he is? Who do you say Jesus is? Praise the Lord. Who do you say he is? Well, there are many people who have many different thoughts. 
as to who he is. There are many people who do not understand who Jesus is. They do not know him. They do not have a personal relationship with him. And thus, they do not know who Jesus is. That is why our world is so plagued as it is, is because people do not know who Jesus is. He's more than just a prophet. He's more than just a, a great man who came, who lived and died. He's more than all of that. Because as it was given by Peter, he said, Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Messiah. Thou art the Son of the living God. And that says something. That says volumes to us as to whom Jesus is. But do we really, really know who Jesus is? Do you know? Do you know? I'm not talking about you're a member of a church. Have your name on the church roll. You go to church, but yet you have never had a personal relationship with him. You've never really truly accepted him to be the Lord of your life. You've never surrendered everything over to him because that's who Jesus is. He came to be our savior and our redeemer and to redeem us from the curse of the law. He came to bring us into fellowship with the God because we had lost that fellowship because of our sins and iniquities. Yes, there were those that had come before him who were great men. But I heard the Bible say, a greater than Solomon is here. Solomon was a great man and did a great work. But there is one who is greater than he. That is Jesus Christ himself and him crucified. There is none like the Lord. And so when he asked his disciples, some began to say that thou art John the Baptist. John the Baptist did a good work. John the Baptist was the forerunner of Christ. And but John the Baptist died and they thought perhaps now he's come back in the form of Jesus Christ. Ah, I've heard people say that they've lived before. I don't know how they can say that, but that's what they they do say and they have believed that they've been in this world before. I want you to know you only got one chance at life on this side of eternity. And so they began to say that thou art John the Baptist, thou art Elias, who was a great prophet, who did many miracles and great works in his day and time, and was taken away in a chariot when the Lord got ready for him to go home. And so now they're saying, this is he that has come back. Ah, and then there are others who say he was just a great prophet. They thought he was Jeremiah, and Jeremiah did a great work. But none of these are true. It was Jesus Christ and himself, born incarnate from God himself. He became the living bread. He became the Alpha and Omega. He became everything that mankind needs through his Father. And even when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the river, he went straight up into heaven. And oh, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. I am thoroughly convinced that if we would hear and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we would not have the problems that we are facing today in our society, in our world. There would have been no insurrection in Washington. There would be no one walking around telling lies upon lies. There would be no need for a police force if everyone knew who Jesus was. 
there would be no need for lawyers if everyone knew who Jesus was. In fact, there would be no need for doctors. I hate to say it, uh, except everyone knew who Jesus was. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. There is none like him. Nowhere. And oh, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. You ought to turn your life over to Jesus. You've tried everything else. You've enjoyed the pleasures of this world. And you found out that the path that you're going down is the path of destruction. But because we are so blind, we cannot see. We do not understand. Listen, every home ought to know who Jesus is. If every home knew who Jesus was, it would have to be my father, teach your sons. And mothers, teach your daughters. That's the only way that everyone is going to know who Jesus is. You've got to instruct them. In the Bible, there was an Ethiopian who was sitting in a chariot. And as the disciple Stephen came along, the deacon, he found him in the chariot. And he was reading the word of God. And so he asked him, do you understand what you read? And he said, how can I except some man guide me? You see, you've got to have someone to teach you about the way of God, about whom you do not know. That's why he called preachers. And so he began to expound unto him who Jesus was and what he was reading. And when he got through, he took him and baptized him. Why did he baptize him? Because now he knew who Jesus was. Well, as I said, if every home knew who Jesus was, there would be no thief. There would be no drugs in our world. If everybody knew who Jesus was, there would be no alcohol. I know some don't like that, too. but listen, that is nothing but a spirit that controls you. But you need the spirit of God to lead you and guide you to order your steps and to direct you. You don't need some spirit that will lead you to talk to a telephone pole. Why? Because you're drunk and hung over by that spirit. But if you knew Jesus, you would be clothed and setting in your right mind. If you knew Jesus, well, how can we convince the world they need to know Jesus. I understand that there was a man who had a son who was quite intelligent. And he said on one Sunday he was bored. So he decided to give him something challenging to do. And he took a picture of the world map and tore it up and gave it to his son. Thought it was going to take him quite some time to put it back together. But within a matter of minutes, he came back with it put together. And he asked him, I said, how did you do it so quickly? He said, well, on the back of the world map was a picture of God and the family. And he said, I just put God and the family back together and let the world take care of itself. If we would do that, well, if the governors, if the mayors, if the president, if Congress, if the legislators, if the senators, if all of the so-called politicians would come to know Jesus Christ, this world would be in a different state if they knew who Jesus was. Well, I'm told that there was a young man in the Bible. And I'm just about through. There was a young man in the Bible. He was possessed by a devil. He was so demon-possessed 
until the demon would cause him to do unseemly things. And the men in the city would come with chains and, and they would get upon him and bind him with those chains. And, and he would break those chains and, and free himself. And, and they did all that they could and, to try to possess him and try to contain him. But they could not and, because he was possessed by many devils. And, and so when he saw Jesus, and, the Bible said the young man began to worship the Lord. And, listen, when he saw Jesus... And, that's what we need the world to do is to see Jesus yeah. and to know who Jesus is. And, and here he is. And, and he began to say, what do you have to do with me? Well, Why have you come hey. to torment me? That was not the young man, but that was the demons that were possessing him. And they knew who Jesus was. Listen, if the devil knows who Jesus is, well, ought you to know who Jesus is. Every husband ought to know who Jesus is. Every father ought to know who Jesus is. Every mother ought to know who Jesus is. Your children, your babies, they know how to break dance. Well, they know how to do the moonwalk. Well, but do they know who Jesus what? is? Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Somebody said, everybody Woo! ought to know who Jesus is. Yeah. Everybody Woo! ought to know who he is. He's not just a good man. He's just I, not just a savior. He's your redeemer. He is your sanctifier. Yeah. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He is the staff of life. He's your joy in the midst of sorrow. Well, He's your hope for tomorrow. He's everything that you need. It's wrapped up in Jesus. Do you glory. know him? Glory, glory. Do you know him? Do you know him? Say, well, I wasn't raised up in the church. That's no excuse. You can still get to know him. Hallelujah. Many were not raised up in the halls of Harvard. They were raised up in perhaps Harlem or in the ghetto somewhere. But somehow, some way, they were able to make it to that university. And now it changed their entire life. If you would come to know Jesus, Woo! he would change your life. He'll do it! Things you used to do, yes. you won't do anymore. Places you used to go, you won't go anymore. Hallelujah, you need a Savior. You need a God. You need Jesus. Do you know him? Mother, you ought to know him for your daughters. Fathers, you ought to know him for your sons. For the Bible said that one day every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That means every king, every potentate, every dictator, everyone that was born on the face of eternity, on time, you're going to say it was Jesus. He's Alpha and Omega. It's Jesus. He's the soon and coming King. It's Jesus. He's my Lord. He, Lord. Don't let it be said too late. Don't let it be said too late because you don't know him. Mercy. That he's going to say, depart from me. Ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Oh, we strive for certain things in life. We want to obtain certain things in life. We want to be certain people in life. We want to make so much money in life. Sure. But listen, more than that, you need to know Jesus. More than that, you need to turn your life over to Jesus. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is.
The queen needs to know who Jesus is. The doctor needs to know who Jesus is. The homeless person needs to know who Jesus is. Your son, your daughter needs to know who Jesus is. I guarantee you, if we come to know Jesus, your life will be the richer for it. You will be a better person. Your life will be different. You will not be the same. And I guarantee you, even the dog will know there's a difference ah, in your life. All right. Because you know Jesus. <laughs> He'll know that there's something different about you. It's because you know Jesus. Do you know him? You can know him. Now is the time. Now is an opportunity for you to come to know Jesus. He will save you. He'll yes, do it. he will. He will redeem you. He will forgive you for all of your sin, all of your mess-ups, all of your hang-ups. If you would just come to him and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the Alpha and Omega. Turn your life over to him now. Give it to him now. Let him put your life under new management. Doesn't matter how old you are, how long you've been on the face of the earth. Listen, now is the time to accept Jesus Christ. For sure. I've seen folks 80 years old go back to college and get their college degree well, because sir. they did not do it when they were younger. Well, you say, well, what good is it going to do them? I don't know. Maybe it's a personal goal, a personal satisfaction that they accomplished it. You see? But listen, it ought to be your personal satisfaction that I found Jesus. I met Jesus, and I know him for myself. Listen, that's what the devil doesn't want you to do, but you need to do it. You need to humble yourself and say, I need Jesus for myself. There will be no greater, greater change that you could make than to allow the Lord to come into your life, than to allow the Lord to be the head of your life. Why don't you do it today? Why don't you turn your all over to him today in Jesus' precious name? Bow your heads with me. Lord, there's someone here now, hallelujah, that does not know you. But Lord, I tried to introduce them to you as well as I could. God, I pray that you would take up fellowship with them. Knock at the door of their hearts. Come in and forgive them for their iniquities. Blot out their transgressions. Yes, Lord. Forgive their sins, O oh God. And save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. Save them today, Lord. Sanctify them and fill them with your precious, precious Holy Ghost. Make a new creature out of them today, Lord. Today, regardless of color, regardless of nationality. For all souls belong to you. For sure. Blot out their transgression. And Lord, that they might come rejoicing. That they know you in the beauty of holiness and in righteousness. You come to make their life better. And we give you praise and thanks for that today. In Jesus' precious name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. I'm through. But I pray that you got something out of the word of God on today. Yeah, yes. Everybody hey. ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody knows who Santa Claus is. You ought to know who Jesus is. All right. Jesus is real. For sure. I said Jesus is real. And he came for you to redeem you, to save you. It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm so glad I know him. I'm so glad I found him for myself. 
I'm so glad I went to the altar that Sunday night and got down on my knees. What? And the saints got around me and began to say, call Jesus. Say, save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Save me. And guess what? He did. He came in and saved me that Sunday night. I'm so glad. Listen, open your heart and let him in. I beg of you, I plead with you, open your heart and let Jesus in. He wants to come in and sup with you and make a new creature out of you in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. I pray that you would take this word to heart. Woo! Beautiful. And that you would share it with someone else. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask that you would share an offering with us on today, particularly of the saints. If this is your time to give of your tithe, if you would give your tithe on today. If not, I'm giving my offering on today. I must be the first partaker of the fruit. And I'm going to ask that you would do likewise to give that offering and that tithe. All you got to do is to download the Givelify app if you don't have it, and you can give on today. Go to the Spirit of Praise, Church of God in Christ, and you can give your gift. Amen. Or you can mail it to 368 Saliet, S A L L I O T T E, E Course, E C O R S E, Michigan. Amen. 48229. And we certainly will receive your gift. Bless the Lord. And particularly if you are not a member of some church, if you are not saved in another church, then you need to sow into this ministry. Amen. And I guarantee you the Lord will bless you in your giving. God bless you. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing. Lord, I pray that as we come to give of that tithe and that offertory, as we come to give this gift unto you today, I pray, Lord, that thou would bless both gift and giver. Bless them 30, 60, hallelujah, holiday on me, and a hundred foes. Meet every need, praise the Lord. Somebody's is need is being met right now. As you prepare to give, the Lord is opening a door of favor for you. He's opening a door of blessing for you right now. Hallelujah. The Lord told me this is going to be God's, hallelujah, impossible blessings. He's going to bless. And somebody, as you stretch forth to give, don't draw it back, but go ahead and give it. Because God is going to bless you out of what you give on today. Yes. In Jesus' precious name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I'm through. I pray that you would meet us again on Tuesday at our 6 p.m. prayer. Tuesday at 6 p.m. Join us in prayer. And then on Wednesday, we'll be back into our Bible study. And I encourage you to invite someone else to hear the word of God. That's all we need is God's word. We don't need all this other stuff. We need the word of God. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Do you know him? Do you know him?